I just wanted to start with a, a wonderful scripture on my heart this morning, which was Isaiah 12. Surely God is my salvation. Hallelujah. And then further down it says, In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the people. Shout aloud.
stuck in right now, just break out of it this morning. Break yourself out of it. If it's been a thing of sickness, step out of it. If you need to stand up, stand up. If you need to shake it off, shake it off. Whatever it is that has held you back in this season, Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we respond to your word. Lord, we respond in faith. Father, even though we don't sense it in our body, even though we don't feel it in our emotions, Father, today we trust in your word. We believe that your word is transformative. And Lord, we step into it today in faith for freedom, in faith for a miracle, in faith for your blessing that flows like a river. And Lord, we declare and we decree in this place this morning your banner, your banner over us, over our families is love. And nothing, nothing, nothing of the old season, nothing, nothing, nothing of the old way can restrict us anymore. Grab the hand of the person next to you and just begin for a moment to just pray for them right now. Begin to pray for them for a miracle. Begin to pray for a breakthrough. Begin to pray for them for a restoration. For I am the restoring God, says the Lord. I am the God who is in the business of restoration. And I speak to every spirit of infirmity this morning, and I command it to go in the name of Jesus. And I speak to every oppression, every depression in this, in this place this morning. You go in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear, go in Jesus' name. It leaves now in the name of Jesus. And those who have been crushed by the last season, we declare an end to the old season and the start of the new season this morning in the name of Jesus. So over every name, over every name that has spoken and had a voice in your life, this morning we declare the name that's above every other name. We declare the name of Jesus this morning. His banner over you is love. His banner over you is love. His banner over your family is love. His banner over your mind is love. His banner over you is
are in Jesus. We're going to have communion now. Um, Nicola is going to lead us, and then she's chosen a piece of music. While that is happening, the, the servers will serve you where you sit, and if you hold the bread and the wine, and then I will pray over you. Thank you. I just wanted to share um, from the story of the, um, the thief on the cross. So I'm just going to read from Luke 23. Verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on the right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for what we are getting. What our deeds deserve. Sorry, we are getting what our deeds deserve. But the man, this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. And these verses are probably the most meaningful for me in the Bible. Um, I thought that as long as I can remember, really. Um, when I picture Jesus on the cross, experiencing the worst and most brutal moment of his life, and yet he is still able to show the most incredible compassion and forgiveness to the thief on the cross. And the thief, recognising that Jesus has done nothing wrong, dares to ask Jesus for forgiveness for his wrongdoing, saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then there is the most wonderful promise from Jesus. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. As we take communion, I'd like to play a song called the Father of Jesus. And in this, there's a line that says, you and only you could know the price you had to pay. You and only you would have this much to give away. Let us reflect on that truth and thank him for his wonderful gifts of forgiveness, compassion, kindness, love, peace, joy, and eternal life, and so much more. I'll pray and then we'll take communion. Dear Jesus, thank you that you loved us so much that you would pay the price of death on a cross. Thank you that we are saved from death to life when we seek forgiveness for the things that we've done wrong. As we take the bread and wine, we remember and give thanks for your death and your resurrection.
take the wine and he's paid the way for everything. Thank you, Jesus. Christian author named Francine Rivers. Oh, oh. Right, and it's based on the story or the book of Amos. So it's, it's the most amazing story. I mean, sorry, I keep saying that wrong, don't I? I said it wrong the last time too. <laughs> but it is the most amazing story of God our Redeemer. Um, so it's very, very easy to bring along non-Christians to such a movie because it's just a beautiful love story. 
Um, and you know that it is the love of God that draws people unto him. So we're going to have dinner. Very light dinner. Oh, we're not going to ask them to Unless you want to. <laughs> so it starts at 6 on the 21st of May. Saturday evening, we're going to be here so that it makes it very, very easy for everyone um, to get here. We do have a little glitch, Steve, because you're not here and Lindsay's not here, so we need you to teach us about the tech. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Daryl, would you like to say something about the men? Well, neither of you. We'll be a bit of a different person as last did it last time. So the men. Yay! We're going to be men of the Friday. Yay! We're going to have the hottest curry ever. Yay! Nancy so it's, and Barbara. Uh, it's Nancy and Barbara. She makes the curry. It's not <laughs> hot enough. <laughs> so Roy Graham's half past seven. So uh, men, if you're coming, please let uh, Graham, yourself, or Lance know. Uh, there's a menu to choose from. It's on the WhatsApp group. If you're not on the men's WhatsApp group, let Myself, Lance, or Brian, no, we, we've got admin access so we can actually add you. We've um, rearranged the date, especially so Steve could make it. Yeah. Because he's going to show us how manly he is. <laughs> so, 7 30 this coming Friday. Thank you. Uh, I just want to give out some words that we had in the pre service prayer time, just to say that that's open to anybody and everybody. You can come a few minutes early. There's no elite here. We're all the body. We all do it. It's in two, two parts. We have some words about the Valley of Dry Bones. And I know we've been thinking about the prodigals, uh, but it, there was a sense of there's a rattling of the spirit, and it was about intimidation for some of these people, that maybe their past, the enemy is trying to hold them back through shame. So we, I just want to us all for a second to hold, to shut our eyes and just to pray for anybody that's on our heart that we want to draw back. So Jesus, you know who's on our hearts. You know those that we love and are not following you or for whatever reason are not in the body. And we call them back in your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And for ourselves, we need to be sensitive that when people come back, that we, whether they bring their baggage, whatever they come like, but that we make space in the body so that that bone can slot back in. Yes. So we pray we will be an inclusive people. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we pray at this time that you will add people to us yes. who've fallen away from you or who past hurts have, have stopped walking with you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And there was an encouragement as well for us to follow up people. If you know someone that you haven't seen them for a few weeks, don't just think, well, where are they? Pick up the phone. So, how are you doing? Are you all right? Can I pray for you? Do you want to come for coffee? Are you all right? That we need to be seeking one another. Mm -hmm. And then the last word was that there are people here that they've got their toe in the water and it's really refreshing and they're really enjoying it and they're up to their ankles and they're quite happy. But the invitation is you can go so much deeper. And we heard today of a God who loves you who's not going to hurt you. So swim, get in there. Don't just paddle. Well, I say that to myself as well. Thank you. So we're going on to the giving now. Yes. I'm trying to do better job than we did last time. Um, in um, uh, 2 Corinthians 8 9, Paul spends quite a lot of time talking about uh, giving. Um, uh, and in essence, it's that Jesus has given everything. So uh, that that's, should be our heart in it. Um, he says this, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. But then an important bit, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace about you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Uh, sorry, every good work. Um, so, there are buckets around. If there's a bucket near you, uh, the buckets are going to come around. People, um, 
give my uh, direct debit and set standard one to. Um, so not everyone will give, but uh, feel free. I was so blessed last last week when uh, this congregation gave and gave and gave. And it was just a wonderful time last week. Um, yeah. mm. Sorry. Yeah, just a wonderful time that um, you are a generous, a genuine congregation. And I bless you for it. Uh, so, the week's coming around, I'll just uh, bless what's been given. Father God, we thank you for your generosity to us. You are so generous. And I thank you that you allow us to be as generous as we want to be, Father. We want to be more generous, I guess. But we're not compelled. Oh, wow, well, it's just a compulsion of love, isn't it? Yeah, we're not compelled, Father. We can decide for ourselves. We give us responsibility. But we just thank you. I thank you now for everything that's been given this morning, Father. And I ask you to bless it, Lord, for your kingdom, Lord. We, yeah, for all the have lots, Father, I ask that this house will be a house of uh, generosity, Lord. Mm. Amen. Yeah, thank you for your heart, Jesus. Sorry, guys, I'm not in that Thank you for what's been given, Father, and we just bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. And there's. Details. <laughs> if you're watching online this morning, uh, Dave's asked me to give the detail. That's the number that's, I'm saying it's, it's the number that's permanently ingrained in my head for our account details. But the worrying thing is if I then also know some other numbers for the business, then uh, sometimes I give the wrong details. But anyway, so um, if you'd like to give online this morning, then of course we want you to be part of this. You know, we're not asking for money because we need it. The Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills, yep. but he invites us into the joy of giving in order that it can do something in us because God wants his blessing to flow like a river through our lives. And, you know, this church last week, not only were you generous, but we gave and gave above, wow. actually, uh, you know, for the number of people here. It's amazing. I mean, if I showed you what was given, it was utterly, utterly outstanding. So thank you for for being there and for doing that and for yeah. the joy that comes as a result as you release seed and uh, my prayer is and i'm just going to pray again if that's okay dave because i want to release seed time and harvest to you there is a principle in god that happens now i know we do this every sunday when we talk about giving and we speak about the sowing and reaping aspect but you know some of us we we kind of do this thing where we tip god through our giving and particularly if you give online it just happens or you know comes out of your bank account you don't assign the seed and what do i mean by that well you know yesterday i was planting out my summer bedding and uh, so i went to crossways nursery quick plug for crossways i do love crossways and a curly cross there if you get to go there mention my name and you hopefully you get something next time we go but there we are i went and bought a load of summer bedding got my pots ready and i started planting out and you know tomato seeds are amazing things you put them in you plant the seed in the ground, but you don't just put it somewhere, you actually nurture that seed. You do something with a compost, you do something to prepare the ground. And then once that seed is in, you don't just let the seed be forgotten about. You know, if the seed's forgotten about, it's not gonna produce a harvest. But you allow the gardener to come and to water the seed. You allow the, the little sprout just to come up, and at the point that it's showing two little little flowers at the top, I don't know what they're called, you gardeners will have to tell me. You take it out and then you repot it and you repot it again to the point where it's actually placed in the place where it then grows. And so often with our giving, we give a seed, we give a gift to the Lord's earth, but we've then forgotten about it. We don't ever assign that seed to produce what it's going to return to. You say, if you plant tomato seeds, you expect tomatoes. If you plant an apple tree, in time, you're going to get apples. Hallelujah. Not just once, but again and again and again and again. And you know, as you have given, I want you to believe and start asking the Lord for multiplication of what you have sown. Because God wants to bless you. Did you hear me? He wants to bless you. You know, if you are believing God for a promotion at work, God wants to bless you. If you're believing for something in your family, God wants to bless you. You know, I'm a big believer in revival and sowing into revival. So I will sow into revival, believing I'm going to see a return for revival in my life. Amen. And so as we have given today, and as you're participating online, if you want to give, the numbers are... 378 239 It's 378 239 The sort code 090127. 
09012. That's Crown Global's account. It's the account of the church here. It's a Santander account. You can give online or through the website crownfamily.church or crownglobal.com. 378-239-08-090127. Okay, so let's pray. Can you stand? And let's just believe the Lord as we stand in faith. If you're giving through the bank, then just, just in your faith, say, Father, that's my seat. That's my seat. If you've given today or even last week, perhaps you sowed an unusual, special gift last week. Let's just pray that the, now the windows of heaven might be open over your life and over your family. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. Father, we thank you for each other. We thank you for the joy of partnering with you. And Lord, your word says that we partake in the grace of a man or a woman through the power of our seed. And Lord, in the same way last week as we sowed into David Hudson's life, as we sowed into our dear friends Doug and Lindsay, Lord, we are asking that we would partake in the work that you're doing in their lives. And that Lord, you would bless us through the power of the seed. Father, we we speak forth over every seed that has been sown that is yet to produce. Father, we call it to produce now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask you today for a miracle in our finances. Lord, that we can be a blessing to the nations, a blessing to the community, a blessing to those around us. Father, we're asking, Lord, that you would do unusual miracles amongst us, not only in signs and wonders, but Lord, through the power of giving. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we declare, I declare and decree over every person, over every giver in the house of God today, the windows of heaven open, the storehouses of heaven open over your life, open over your family. And Lord, would you do it quickly, swiftly this week in order that there can be return. And Father, we're just praying this morning as well for our dear friend Dorothy. Lord, as she's in a hospital, Father, we're asking, Lord, that you would assign your angels to camp around. Father, for Rosemary as well at home. Father, for all of those watching who are not with us today for whatever reason. Father, we speak your word of healing now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke every lie of the enemy, every spirit of infirmity. We bind it from operating now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we're asking, Father, you would release healing now in the name of Jesus. Father, even this week, even this month, would you do it and Lord as different ones of us are going into surgery and believing for miracles of healing Father we speak and we declare acceleration of healing complete healing in the name of Jesus Father we declare no pain Lord we thank you Father for a quick return a quick harvest in Jesus name I agree to today with you for a miracle and we thank you Lord for doing it and all God's people said Amen Amen Amen. Amen. Did you take the seats can I just say one thing quickly, Jill? Are you, have you got any other announcements? Are you doing? Great. Okay, great. Can you feel the shift that's taking place? I don't know if you can sense it in the spirit, but there is a shift that is taking place. We were believing God for it, and we had a deep sense in our hearts that actually as we began to see this series about freedom in Christ, that God was going to bring us into a place of freedom. And you know, as soon as we said that, it was almost like, the attack of the enemy seemed to come on all fronts. Things started happening in people's lives. Were like, oh my gosh, the enemy's just trying to have a field day to try and distract from what he wants to do. And you know, at that point when that happens, you have to do something. What do you do? You have to stand. Do you remember going back to what we spoke probably a year or so ago? God moves with a man or woman who moves. God moves with a man or woman who speaks. And God moves with a man or woman who stands in their authority. And so as we stand in our authority of who we are in Christ, that's when his freedom manifests. That's when we see him moving. And so we are believing God in this time as we appointed deacons last week. Thank you to all of you who stayed with us for the church lunch. It was a long service, I know, but, you know, it was good. And what a time we had with David Hudson. Wasn't it great? And to send him out and to receive him as a missionary from this church and to now financially support him is wonderful. We're going to see a harvest, I believe, in this church as a result. And so what's God going to do over this next period? Well, it's a time of acceleration. And that means each of us are going to move into new ways of thinking. It's a shifting out of old patterns of behaviour. I know that, I know I'm feeling that. I'm, I'm feeling change. And change is, is, is sometimes not comfortable. 
but we allow the Holy Spirit to change it. We allow his Holy Spirit to change our hearts, to soften us, to, to make us more malleable as we're placed on the potter's wheel. And as that happens, something glorious happens. He forms us, doesn't he? He shapes us. He creates in us something that is truly wonderful. And so this time as we're going through this series talking about freedom in Christ, God is bringing us to the revelation that not only is he Jesus our Savior, but he is Jesus our Lord. He is Jesus our Lord. And if he is Lord, that means that there has to be a shift. It means there has to be a change. Now, I don't know what mum's doing today. I don't want to preach. And there's a danger that I could because I'm preaching next week. So um, I'm going to save my bit. I'm going to talk on Jesus is Lord next week. Um, and that's exciting. I've already got that word bubbling away in my heart for, for what God is going to do. But just be aware of where we're going. You know, I said last week, if you see somewhere and you think, wow, that place is a place that needs a church, or it's a building that's vacant, and it's been vacant for a very long time. I wonder if that's the place where Crown Family Church should be. You know, God has called us to be a people on the move of God. On a, just a, when was it, Mum? Was it Friday night? Saturday, I can't remember. It was very, very late, or early in the morning, I should say. I got there at 11 o'clock, and the service concludes at about 4.30 in the morning. And these are our, our Kenyan friends who know how to pray, and the place was packed with 250 young people, all under the age of about 25. I was the oldest one there, and I was the only white boy in the place. And that was fine, you know. And so I, I just got with it, and they were going for it. And they're just down the road in Wimbledon. But they're on our patch. And I said to the guy who invited me, he's a good friend of mine, came to the gathering a number of times. You would have heard him preach one of the times at the Father's Heart Conference all those years back. His name is Tyrone, and the Lord is doing a work with him where he's running something called Wildfire. And it's a youth movement to gather students, gather young people to praise, to worship, to pray. And they do it overnight. They do it once a month. And so I've just been going along to support them. I didn't stay to the end. I have to be honest. I left at 1.30 in the morning to go home to bed. But that's my shame on me. Maria, Maria decided to stay at home with the kids. That, that's fine. She said, you go there. So 1.30 in the morning, I got back. My heart was so stirred. So this is on our patch, Southwest London and Surrey. What can we do to serve? What can we do to partner with what God is doing through different people and so God is on the move and he's doing things not only in our church but in the churches in this region and we need to be part of that and so let's get into faith this isn't the end destination the upper room is a transitional space and let's be inviting people perhaps people who were once with us in the church who maybe for one reason or whatever have are no longer with us not with us in, in a church setting let's invite them again and invite them to come back and experience what God is doing amongst us because this is the family of God. And this is a prophetic house, amen? Yeah. It's an apostolic center that God is going to raise up yeah. to train and equip people, to send teams out again. There's a reason that we appointed Lenny into that deacon role of missions because we're going to send a team, I believe, to Romania and to other places to do evangelism and all these other things. So there's lots to do and there's many, many things to get involved with. And I know we're all busy people, but pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what is it you've got for me? What should I be doing in this season in order to step up to see the kingdom of God come in my life? Amen. Amen. Jill. Right, can we put our hands together and welcome Sheena? <laughs> Dave said this might put you off, but I said you were a big woman. <laughs> so I did what Bird told me yesterday. It was a special day. Oh, birthday. So can we? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Sheena. Happy birthday to you. When people come up here to speak, it really isn't just to tickle your ear holes, you know? The idea is that we're challenged and we want to go home changed. And there are people at the end here to pray with you, and praying with you is a privilege, you know? And you don't even say, say what it is. You could just say, stand with me in prayer for something. But it's really important that we respond. Otherwise, you could just go home and sit down and your dinner and think, well, nice day, and that was the end of that. But we want to be changed. We're on this journey, and this woman is part of it. So, Jesus, we thank you for Sheena. We thank yes. you for what she brings. Yes. We thank you for Holy Spirit, how you use her. And we just pray today that she will be part of our transforming journey. Amen. 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 Do you know, he's given me 15 minutes. And that's about <laughs> 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 
Is this on? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit off piece because it's my birthday. Is that yes. yes. I, hands up. We went out for a meal last night. Hands up, everybody who likes food. <laughs> Put your hand down if you have an allergy to something. <laughs> Put your hand down if you hate any particular substance. <laughs> right. I want three volunteers and a partner. Quick, one, two, three. We haven't got 30 minutes. Um, come on, quick. Let's have under, under 40s, 40s to 60s and over. Wonderful. Go in the middle chair. Come on, logs. <laughs> right, want a youngster, please. Somebody who's younger. Leela. Come on, Leela, go on, Leela. Right, you need a partner. Somebody go stand behind them. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, say that. Uh, yay, yay, yay. 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 Somebody stand behind them. Yay. I used to love a game whereby you are blindfolded and you have to guess the taste of what I'm going to give you. All right? So people standing behind, it's your responsibility just to cover their eyes and collect the teaspoons. Got it? All right. Eyes closed. Round one. Ding, ding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're not, they're not made on this one. Yeah, very brave. Taste the lid. Taste well. When you've decided what it is, tell your co worker. Round two is coming up now. I might not get to round four. <laughs> <laughs> round four. Are you ready? Next one. <laughs> oh, very, very, very that looks very disgusting. <laughs> oh, you're very brave. Whoop, whoop. Have you have you whispered to your man or yeah. woman behind what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last one coming up. I was going to give you a drink, but I think we might open wide. I want as much details as possible from all of this. Preferred the first one. You preferred the first, didn't you? This is your last one. It's a little drink. Just a little drink. <laughs> 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 Don't come in touch with me, so let's see. Last little drink. Has everybody had their drink? Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Put on a drink. Okay. Have you finished? Yes. Come along. Quick, quick. We haven't got long. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Ding, ding. Enough. Okay. What did your lovely lady here say about 
Mango and passion fruit. Oh. Yeah. Well done, Jill. Well done, Jill. Yeah, yeah. Mango. Okay, round two. Taya, what did you think for round two? Cold mashed potato. What did you say? Coconut cake. Coconut cake. <laughs> You're nearly there. What did you what say? Did they said mashed potato. I want to show you. It's not mashed potato. Sweet. It's sweet potato. Round three. Okay, Aaron. What was round three? What did you no say? Idea. Oh, oh come on. Okay. No, that's a muesli. Yeah, that's a muesli. A muesli. Okay, what did you think of chocolate? Chocolate sprinkles. Yeah. Chocolates, any flavour? No, just chocolate. What did you get, Taya? Very specific. 60% dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you what it is. There it is. Salted. Caramel. What percentage is the Dark chocolate. And your final drink? Um, just wheat squash. Wheat squash. Wheat squash. Yeah. 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 Do you know it's what the kids drink? Yeah. And it's blueberry and black currant. Oh, oh, well done. Well done. Okay, thank you very much. You <laughs> now, because I'm going to cut this short a little bit, I'm not going to read the whole of the psalm, but if you'd like to turn to Psalm 34, we have this little verse tucked in the middle that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, God uses our senses in all sorts of different ways. You know, <laughs> it goes on to say in Psalm 119, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. Psalm also says <laughs> in 62 and verse 11, God has spoken once, twice I have heard that power belongs to our God. Once he has spoken, twice we have heard. We have two ears. We have senses to understand. We have eyes to read. We can hear the word of God. And it does things in our heart. And the word is that power belongs to our God. In going off piece a little bit this morning, I've started to look at some characters which I always do in the Bible and I want to start with the children of Israel. Here they were, they had had the most amazing deliverance. They painted the blood on the lintels and they got all the jewellery and food stuff that they needed and God took them out of slavery. Wow! <sighs> but they weren't satisfied. I'm finding myself in the desert here, and now we've got this great big sea in front of us. What are we going to do? And God opens up the Red Sea, and they walk across on dry land. An amazing miracle. And six weeks after they've left Egypt, the supplies have run out. Six weeks. Doesn't take long. It might be for us three days. But the supplies have run out. And what did they begin to do? They began to moan. You know, we can experience something amazing of God and get stuck in the mould and then we begin to moan. Or we begin to, oh dear, same old stuff. Why am I doing this same, same thing every Sunday? No. No. And God said, 
Okay, Moses, tell the people. I will give them meat and bread. Quails in the evening and in the morning after the dew has gone, on the ground you will find bread. And so they gathered for each person a handful and only however much it was they needed for the day. And what does the Bible say? It said it tasted of honey. <coughs> coriander seed. It was just sufficient for the day. And you know they lived on that for 40 years. Cool, we complain if it's the same one cereal. <laughs> Let's be real. We do. We we need to see that when God speaks a word and it's bread from heaven that is coming to us, we need to move on. It's not that we stay in the same pattern and moan and groan. We need to take that word and move into something new. It might be the same word that you had three weeks ago in the meeting and you believe God then. But today, two weeks later, that word is still relevant because he's taking you into something new. We need to take the word of God, taste it, and see that the Lord is good. You know, we've been talking about transition, and David was talking about open doors and everything else that pertains to being locked in or in prison. We have to realize that the word of God for us is power to change, power to move on. Jesus said that he was the bread of heaven. His word is going to be our life source. It's going to be that that feeds us. And if we don't have it every day, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to go hungry. You're not going to see that the word of God will move you on. Jesus said in, oh, let me just get the right verse, 6, John 6, verse 40, that Jesus came to do the will of God, that everyone who sees and believes in him has everlasting life. Everyone. Is this the truth of the word? Yes, it's the word of God. Let's look at another character, Elijah. Here is the prophet of God. People don't like him, particularly the kings, because he speaks into the power structures of the country. And he wasn't wonderfully liked, but what he said was true. He told them that there would be a drought. Now, I know, having lived in Africa for a while, well, what a drought means to these people. You know, when the rains don't fall, the harvest doesn't come, and the ground is parched. And Elijah prophesied that there would be no rain. Until the word of God. You know, there's something about the power within us to bring forth a word that's going to release people. And if we're going to eat the manna of God on a daily basis, we will have the words in season to those that are meant to believe it. Power belongs to our God. That's the word of the Lord. Are you believing for it? So Elijah goes out and, you know, he proclaims <coughs> the drought, and then he, he says, well, what am I going, what am I going to do in the middle of this drought? And so... God says to him, I want you to go to the brook, Cherith, and there I will feed you. You can drink the water from the brook, and I'll send ravens of all creatures to bring bread and meat each day, twice a day. Not once, twice a day. And he did that for two days. And he said, now I want you to get up, and I want you to go. How long did he have to go? on this bread. Not too long this time, but another time. But something happened when he ate this bread because it released a fresh word to him. And he went to a widow who was just about to bake her last bit of bread with her son and then say, that's it, we'll die. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah and he said, make me a cake first and then we'll sit down and we'll have 
We'll have it all together. And your flour will never run out. And your oil will never run out until the day that I send rain on the earth. You know, this is amazing stuff. It would never run out because it was the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord to us that he will be all our sufficiency. Whatever the circumstance comes across us. He will be our lifestyle. He will be the bread from heaven. He will be our release from bondage. He will bring us victory. You know, the word of God doesn't change. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe it? Yeah. Are you standing in the truth of it? Sometimes. Yes. Sometimes I don't really want to know that his peace rules and reigns in this situation, but you have to find it because that's the truth. You have to find it and eat it. And so another time you find he's had this amazing encounter on Mount Carmel and God has taken his sacrifice, which was wet with water. And the prophets of Baal sang all day and shouted and nothing happened to their sacrifice. But when God stepped in, Elijah's, prophet, Elijah's message and his altar, soaked with water, was lit with fire. Come on, it was an encounter that God had ordained. And the prophets of Baal, the prophets who meant nothing in this world, were diminished and killed. But what did Elijah do? He ran away. He'd seen the miraculous. And what did he do? He ran away. And you know, sometimes we, we, we fear man more than fearing God and the truth of what he has done. And he ran away. Why? Because Jezebel, the king's wife, she wanted to kill him. You know, when God raises up prophets, in this day and generation. The Bible says in Isaiah that they will come after those who stand in the word. So don't be surprised when we get all these things coming against us because we're standing for truth and righteousness because that's what the word of God says. So stand firm, Galatians says. Stand firm in the word. What does it say? I'm going to read it again. The first verse in Galatians 5. Stand firm, therefore, in the liberty, the freedom, for which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We can become entangled in our everyday lives with little things that actually are meaningless, that do mean a lot to us. But in the sight of God, they're not difficult to get rid of. And we need to learn to stand in the word of God, which is freedom. If somebody says something to you, I know, I get upset. I didn't mean it like that. Why have they misunderstood me? And I get upset. But the reality is I have to move then into Jesus and say, Jesus, you are life to me. You are my righteousness. Help me change. Help me overcome so that I don't stand in the negativity, but I move into the fullness of the positive word of God. Each one of us can expect that. But you know, <laughs> it is amazing what God will do. And we can all testify to his wonderful grace and his love towards us. You know, when Jesus was around, he just called his disciples and off he goes to a wedding. A great time for celebration. And what happens? The wine runs out. We all know the story. And the great big vats that were, I don't know what you call them, pots, that were used for washing purposes. He told the servants, empty them all out and fill with fresh water. And what happened when they poured out the so-called water? It was the best wine at the wedding. Jesus is saving the best wine for us. He's saving the very best of all that he can give to us as we move on to the last days. The very best. 
swine is coming. Are you expecting it? That's what I have to ask myself. Are we expectant of the very best? You know, when David was speaking about us having four doors, I don't know if you were at the gathering, and we didn't talk about it last Sunday, but he talked about open doors, closed doors, locked doors, and prison doors and how we can be in a season of transition and what he's locked the door behind us because he wants us to move on to something new. He's opening doors. I need to believe for that new thing. He's opening the door. Oh, I'm locked in. I can't get free. But Jesus says, stand firm. And not free. <coughs> stand firm and see the goodness of God. He wants to set us free. And if we're behind locked doors and prison doors, we need to break free. We need to know the freedom with which Christ has died for you and me. You know, Marilyn said we need to look at the cross each day. Right now, if there's something that God would challenge you in that you know you need to bring to the cross of Jesus because you're not free in that area, I invite you just to think now, just for a moment, I was going to say pencils and papers, but I'm not going to do it. Just stop and think, what is it I want to bring to the cross of Jesus that I might be free to move into the new day? So I thank you, Jesus, that there are things that each one of us could put at the cross and say, I want to move. I woke up one morning this week prophesying. Now, this is not an everyday occurrence to me, <laughs> but I've been mulling on some words that Jesus was speaking to me over last weekend, and I woke up this morning in the week, I forget which day it was, and it was so here in my head and in my thinking, and it wasn't, you know, it was sort of five o'clock in the morning. And I don't want to prophesy it out like this, but I want to share what it was that the Lord was showing me. Because verses are found in Isaiah that will reiterate the truth of it, and I can share that with you another time perhaps. But what the Lord was saying to me was that in the latter days, he's building a highway of holiness and righteousness, but he's wanting to clear it of all the stones and all the baggage now. Because if we are to stand firm in the word of God, which does not change, and power belongs to our God, we have got to be the people that stand with the banner of righteousness. We've got to be prepared for those who will speak against us. Because what we're doing is standing for what is right. But he said, I want to clear the stones now that what you walk in in the future will be pure and holy. And as we're in this place of transition and we're looking for moving on, we have got to take the word of God to be truth in every situation that we can stand in righteousness. Because righteousness will exalt a nation. And if we're prepared to put our lives in order, and not be in bondage to fear of man, other problems, then we will see the manifest glory of God. When the manna came down from heaven, the children of Israel said they saw the glory of God. When Elijah called down from heaven fire, the glory of God came down. Jesus is our glory. But we are carriers of his glory. We are carriers of his righteousness. But we need to make ourselves righteous because sometimes we get in the way. We need to crucify the, the old self and live in the fullness of the new. They're challenging words. When um, Paul and Silas were in prison, what happened? In their prison, they began to sing the songs of God. It might help you to put on a worship song if you're finding it tough. 
sing and worship as we saw this morning freedom came when we exalted him the god who is all worthy not because of our situation but for whom he is finally i want to bring you to a verse quickly in hebrews and chapter 2 and verse 9 It says, we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Did he taste it with his mouth? No, he experienced it. He experienced death for every one of us, that we might be free in every area of our life and the glory of God to be seen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. Take his word on a daily basis. Experience the freedom and the truth of what he says, that we will walk in the fullness of his life in the freedom that he has given, that we might manifest his righteousness and holiness in all that we do. Amen. 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 Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, Lindsay, let's sing it. <laughs> <laughs> and be available to pray for you at the end and if anything that uh, Mama said just draws something that you feel the Lord really wants to just uh, speak to you on and you need someone to stand with you then can we get that prayer at the end and they'll be over here on my right on your left but we're going to sing uh... we're going to sing we taste and sing
we finish with the grace. <laughs> and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you online. See you. Have a wonderful Sunday and we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. God bless you.